Okay, good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our options education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And I am very excited today to be walking you through the release of the new Options Play platform um, here at First Trade. We've been working hard over the past few months uh, to upgrade the Options Play platform for you here at First Trade. And we're very excited to show this uh, new platform to you and show you the new functionality that's available to you within the Options Play platform. So before I get started, let's just um, help you understand how to navigate to the Options Play tools. There's a few ways that you can access it. First of all, if you're just on your home screen, there is an Options Wizard button that is always available on your home screen. You can click on that to access the Options Play platform. Also, if you are on uh, your Options Trading uh, order ticket, uh, you can also always access it under Options Wizard uh, there um, to access the Options Play platform. This is different than the Options Trade Ideas that's available to you through the Options Research tab. Uh, if you click on Options Trade Ideas, Options Play also powers the credit spread, the cover call, and short put report for you to find uh, opportunities across these types of strategies. This is more so for screening purposes. If you're looking for opportunities across a wide variety of symbols, we provide them across the options trading ideas tab. But if you're just uh, wanting to explore some option strategies, some some trade ideas, uh, you know, uh, compare different strategies side by side, the options wizard is where you would want to start. And when you click on the options wizard, it'll bring up a pop up with the options play tool in that pop up. So what I want to walk you through is some of the changes that we've recently made to the platform uh, in terms of idea generation screening, um, as well as uh, some of the new um, uh, metrics and strategies that are now supported in options play. So let's start off with the idea section. Um, this is really where we are incorporating new ideas into the platform directly uh, within Options Play. In the old Options Play platform, we only had technical ideas, meaning ideas that were based on technical analysis for the underlying security. Um, so this, this stays the same. You still have the ability to sort through bullish or bearish uh, trade ideas. You can sort through the different uh, cap size. We now have added both an IV rank and liquidity screening feature in your trade ideas. So you can screen out stocks that, let's say, for example, are not very liquid from an options trading perspective. Or if, let's say, you like to trade options that either have high volatility or low volatility, you can sort that. You can use it also sort it based on sector, as well as the individual scans that have triggered the um the scans themselves. So for example, if you're looking for bearish opportunities today um, or bullish opportunities today, you can click on that and quickly see what is available with regards to um, the opportunities that we have identified for today. So for example, what I've done here is I've basically selected uh, stocks that are uh, and I've, I've, I've screened out stocks that are not very liquid from an options trading perspective. This way I'm only looking at, at trades that I know that I'll be able to potentially click, uh, trade utilizing options. So by clicking on any of, this, uh, of the ideas in the ideas tab, it populates the rest of the screen. And largely the rest of the experience will still be the same once you click on a specific symbol or type in a symbol here at the very top. Um, but we do have recent, we have added a few different um, indicators that are relevant for options traders. So within your um, quote bar, we now have a liquidity feature and an IV rank feature. Uh, this is really where we can now show you whether a stock that you are trading is liquid or not from an options trading perspective. So if you're plugging in a symbol and you're not quite sure whether or not you think you're going to be able to get filled uh, very easily on an options trade for that security, you can uh, type in that security. We'll tell you what the liquidity of the options are, and we'll also tell you what the IV rank is. 
So whether the options are relatively inexpensive or expensive, an IV rank is scored on a score of zero to 100. Zero means that it's, it's cheap relative to its 52 week history, meaning it's the cheapest we've seen options uh, priced at over the last 52 weeks. Uh, IV rank of 100 means it's the most expensive we have seen over the past 52 weeks. And if let's say it's at 50%, that means it's right in the middle with regards to how cheap or expensive options are um, right now. So for example, when we look at BSX, we see that the liquidity is very liquid. Uh, what that means to me is that I will be able to trade options pretty much near the midpoint on these options. Um, uh, I'll be able to place an order, put the order in uh, you know, near the midpoint and expect that I will get filled fairly quickly on those types of trades. And with an IV rank of 10 out of 100, that means options are fairly inexpensive. So I'm, if I'm looking at buying options like a call option or a debit spread, uh, you know, these are the environments that might be suitable to be buying options because they are relatively cheap versus if let's say IV rank was relatively high, then I perhaps might defer to uh, being a seller of options in this particular example. You also have things like earnings date uh, and the number of days that, you know, BSX reports earnings on April 24th, which is seven days away. Um, and it reports in the morning on AM um, uh, on the 24th. We used to have one month and six month trend and relative strength underneath, but now we moved it to the top of the quote bar. This gives you a good sense for what the short-term and long-term trend of the stock is and the current relative strength, meaning how is it performing relative to the rest of the market. So this particular example, the one month trend is neutral, but the six month trend remains fairly bullish. Uh, and the relative strength here is, is high from a score of nine out of 10. That means it is outperforming nine out of 10 stocks in the S&P 500, for example. Um, at the moment, when you're looking at a stock that is performing quite strongly, despite the fact that the markets have taken a bit of correction here over the past couple of weeks, as you can see, this stock has kind of just traded sideways, and that's why it's had a strong relative strength. So this all gives you the information that you need for the underlying security. You get a sense for not only how liquid is an option, um, you know, whether it is a better environment to be buyer or sellers of options, and also a general directional view of the underlying security. Um, so that helps you find ideas uh, with regards to screening for uh, the underlying security. So whether you have a bullish or bearish view of the underlying stock. And then uh, if you choose to trade a specific strategy, uh, on the old platform, we had bullish strategies where we would give you these three bullish strategies. And then we also have bearish strategies where we would give you these three bearish strategies. And these strategies were pre-built for you, meaning not only have we selected the strategy, we've also selected an, an expiration date and a strike price. And it gives you a starting point as to how you can um, leverage these strategies uh, where you don't have to pick, you don't have to pull up an options chain. You don't have to uh, figure out on your own if, let's say, you wanted to trade BSX. Um, where on the options train do you want to choose? You know, if you were doing this manually, you'd have to pick an expiration date. You have to pick a strike price. You have to pick a strategy. There's a lot of manual work that might go into selecting a strategy if you were doing it the old-fashioned way using the options chain. So what we're doing is we're basically automating the process of picking an expiration date, picking specific strike prices, and even picking the overall strategy for you so that you can actually compare different strategies side by side and get a sense for what strategy might be best suited for you, depending on what your overall outlook of the underlying stock is. So for example, if you're bullish on BSX, We'll compare buying 100 shares to buying a simple call option, which is a simple option strategy, and then comparing that to a call spread, which is a more complex option strategy. Um, and you can see how much the cost of the trade is. You can also use the PNL simulator to say if, let's say, the stock was to rise for, let's say, $72, you know, what is my potential return for each of the strategies? So 6% return on the stock. 
52% return on the call option, 80% return on the call spread. If I traded these strategies, these three strategies, understanding how much you're risking on each of these trades, understanding how much potential reward you have, your probability of profit. These are all the things that we break down for you as part of the options play tools. All you do, the only thing you have to do is look for an idea, select a directional view, and we can help you structure the options trade that might suit your uh, risk tolerance and your specific outlook. Um, and we have all these different tools down here to help you fine tune your strategy, help you understand your strategy, such as uh, selecting the number of, uh, of, um, of, of contracts to trade. So for example, if you wanna risk $2,000 on a specific trade, it'll calculate that you can buy eight contracts of this and it will model each of these strategies side by side, assuming that you want to risk no more than $2,000 on this trade. And you can actually compare the two strategies side by side and say, what happens if it reaches $72? Uh, $72 then you know your profit on the $2,000 investment would be around $1,600 at expiration. Um, so this is all designed to help you better understand uh, you know, these strategies, uh, even a plain English explanation that helps you better understand how much you're risking, how much you can potentially make, um, and what the stock needs to do in order for that strategy uh, to be profitable. Um, so these are all the tools that were included in your previous version of Options Play. And if you decided that this is a strategy that you wanted to trade, just uh, what you can do is you can simply click on the trade button, and we have a preview order button here at the bottom. And what you can do is you can basically click on that button and that will actually stage the order for you within your options play. Uh, I'm sorry, your first trade trade ticket. So as you can see, everything is filled out for you. Buy eight contracts of the June 67 and a half call. Sell eight contracts of the June 75 call option. And you can effectively uh, put in a price and uh, and send this off for execution. So you see the midpoint here is $2.45. And what you can do is you can use that uh, to basically preview that order and potentially send this trade off for execution. So um, that is, you know, that was the experience that was already incorporated in the old options play platform. But what I want to now show you is some of the new strategies that we now support as part of the platform. Um, as I said, uh, what we had before was bullish and bear strategies. What we recently added are these neutral high implied volatility strategies. So what would you trade if let's say you had a more neutral uh, view on it? Many of you like to sell credit spreads. So what we have is the automated put credit spread, the automated call credit spread, and now we also offer the Iron Condor strategy. Uh, the idea is to just provide you with more starting points for popular strategies that you guys are trading so that if, let's say, you wanted to take a trade a, a put, a, a put a credit spread here, it automates finding the expiration date, strike price, based on the best practices that we teach you excuse me, for the strategy um, gives you all of the relevant information. So for example, again, if let's say you want to risk $2,000 on selling a credit spread, it'll tell you that you can sell 12 contracts of this put credit spread. And as you can see, your max risk here will be $1,956, which is within your $2,000 stated maximum risk that you want to trade. And if that's a trade that you want to make, you can click on the trade button and uh, we will, um, uh, again, uh, pre-fill your order ticket for you uh, within your uh, first trade order ticket. Um, so the new strategies are just there to help support those of you that trade some of those neutral high implied volatility strategies like credit spreads and iron condors, and they are now supported out of the box that the old platform did not provide. So that is one new key feature that I think many of you will hopefully use. It's one that I use a lot on our platform. Uh, we designed it because these are very popular option strategies, and we wanted to offer automation to help you uh, quickly uh, construct those strategies 
analyze those strategies and potentially uh, uh, execute those strategies in just a few clicks of the mouse, okay? So moving on to kind of new ideas. This is really where when we're gonna go back to our idea section. And as you can see, what I did before is I walked you through our technical ideas. But when now what we've now incorporated are also options-based ideas directly in the options play platform. So for example, if let's say you're looking for cover call opportunities, we've now incorporated all new cover call opportunities into the platform. And what we can do is we can basically sort all of the opportunities based on what's important to you. So for example, uh, generally speaking, makes sense to sort the cover call opportunities based on yield meaning what symbols generate the highest yield if you were to sell cover calls on. And what you can do is you can sort of go down the list and look for stocks that you own in your portfolio. Um, so for example, if let's say you own Snapchat and you want to sell some cover calls on Snapchat, Snapchat's currently trading at $10.59. This is telling you to sell the $15 strike price uh, so if uh, you were to sell uh, the $15 cover call, you would, in this particular case, uh, yield 4.44% yield in just 44 days. Uh, so, for example, in this particular case, um, what you're doing here is you're collecting $0.45 cents on your one hundred uh, on your $10.50 stock, which is the equivalent of roughly 4.44% in 44 days. If you annualize that, that out for the full year, that comes out to be about 43% yield on a stock that currently pays zero dividends. That is a substantial amount of yield that you are collecting from a stock like Snapchat. Um, and you can basically go down the list and many of you already use this feature in our research tool. Um, I, th that was the report that I was referring to you before. We have the cover call, cash secure put, and credit spread uh, trades in, in the research tool. And this uh, basically helps you understand if you were to sell cover calls on a specific stock, how much yield can you expect to collect? And if you want to click on the trade button, you'll be able to execute this trade quickly by just clicking on the preview order button. Um, so this is all designed to try to make your... Uh, your life to you know find either cover calls, uh, cash secured puts. Uh, so if you if let's say you like to sell cash cash secured puts on stocks, then looking at which stocks uh, generate the highest yield right now from selling cash secured puts. You obviously want to sell cash secured puts on stocks that you want to own. So for example, if let's say you like Snapchat, you think that there's a uh, good potential upside here. This is saying that if you were to sell the $10 strike price for May 17th, you can generate 10% yield in just 30 days. Um, you know, that's not 10% per year, that's 10% in 30 days, which annualizes out to, in this particular case, 219%. You know, you're generating $91 in yield well, while having to put up roughly $909 in terms of collateral or margin in order to sell that, right? So you're collecting $91 in, a, in exchange for $900 of premium that you have to uh, put in. Uh, that's a 10% yield that you're collecting in the next 30 days. Now, Snapchat does report earnings in just eight days. So that's something you have to factor into as to whether or not you feel comfortable selling puts going into earnings. Uh, but that's why we have this earnings flag here as well within the idea section. So you can say, okay, you know, this one has earnings. Maybe I'm not quite comfortable with that, but maybe I'm looking at some of the uh, you know, the gold ETFs, right? And uh, ETFs obviously don't report earnings. So this is, a, you know, an opportunity. Uh, oh, sorry, this is natural gas. This is, an, uh, this is a leveraged natural gas ETF, which may not be suitable for everyone, but you can effectively go down the list and see where are there are opportunities to potentially sell um, for premium. And, you know, if there are any, let's say that doesn't uh, have earnings, you can quickly identify that through this. Um, you can even sort it uh, from here based on whether or not something has earnings. So I can basically say, remove anything that has earnings between now and expiration, uh, maybe remove things that have low IV rank, uh, and then only show me stuff that are either very liquid or somewhat liquid. Uh, this way I can screen this for, for opportunities. So as you can see, Gap, um, Gap obviously had a very strong year last year. Uh, if I were to sell the $20 strike for Gap, 
uh, here I can generate uh, for, for the May 17th expiration, $72 worth of income in exchange for $1,928 in cash that I have to put up in terms of collateral for the trade. That comes out to be a 3.73% yield on my cash, which would annualize out to be about 56% about on a name like uh, uh, a gap. Um, so as you can see, this allows me to quickly screen for opportunities uh, very easily and know where I can potentially generate income selling um, uh, selling premium uh, and how much yield I can get uh, and just all the relevant information that I need uh, to make that trading decision very quickly all within the options play platform without having to leave the platform. And now we've added a lot more filtering capabilities so you can very quickly find the opportunities that make sense to you. And you can sort it based on premium, you can sort it based on yield, you can sort it based on a, a, a lot of different factors that you might find important to you and uh, just basically find the opportunities that suits you for these types of strategies. So we have cover calls, we have short puts, and we also have credit spreads. Many of you use the credit spread opportunity report that's in the options research uh, uh, tools. Um, so what this does is basically finds the best premium versus the, the relative width of the credit spread. Um, so for example, you can see, you know, in this particular case, this UNH bearish call spread will collect 44% of the vertical width. Um, this AGQ, or let's look for maybe some, uh, this Taiwan semiconductor one will collect 42% of the width. So let's say you're bullish on some of the semiconductors and you think Taiwan semiconductors is a good potential buying opportunity. So you can sell the May 31st, 138, 130 put vertical, collect $3.30 for this $8 wide vertical spread. Let's just do a little math here. 330 divided by 800 uh, means that I'm collecting in this particular, in this case, 41% of the vertical width in terms of income for the trade. Uh, so that means I'm risking just about 59% of the vertical width. I'm, I'm potentially making 41 to risk 59 uh, on this potential vertical width and uh, on this vertical spread. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find credit spreads that give you the best possible risk reward, uh, whether it's bullish or bearish, you can screen for those. You can say, only show me bullish opportunities or only show me bearish opportunities. And you can have things like, you know, only show me ones with relatively high IV rank. I only want to see opportunities that generate at least 38% of the vertical width. Uh, and as you can see, there are three opportunities that fit that uh, fit that build, SIG, TSM, and Broadcom. Um, so you can be very restrictive in kind of how you're thinking about this uh, and only look for opportunities that kind of suit your very specific needs. Um, and quickly uh, drill down to what is important to you. And you'll be able to just click on a symbol. For example, let's say you like the gold miners, GDX is collecting 41% of the vertical width. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're basically looking for stocks that have uh, an uptrend, uh, perhaps a little bit of a pullback here. Those are your opportunities to get into it. So not only do these trades align everything from an options trading perspective, but also aligns it from a directional perspective, right? So we, we've gotten a bit of a short-term pullback here. This perhaps is a good entry opportunity for stocks like uh, gold miners. And here I'm collecting a fair amount of vertical width, $83 on a $0.83 cents on a $2, uh, on a $2 wide uh, credit spread, which is over 40% of the vertical width. Um, so this is all automated for you. So if you decided that this is a trade that you wanna make, you can click on the trade button, preview order, and that will fill out the order ticket for you for execution. Um, so we basically have automated this to make it as easy as possible for you to find ideas, analyze the ideas, and be able to click on a button and easily send this off for execution. So that at a high level are some of the new key features that are now incorporated into the new options play platform um, that I wanted to show you that will hopefully make your options trading experience a lot smoother. Uh, you know, organize your workflow onto one platform so that you can do all of your screening, all of your uh, analysis uh, on one tool, and then simply click on a trade button to execute that into your first trade account.
So with that, that covers what I wanted to share with you here today um, in terms of the new features that are now available to you here at the first uh, with the Options Play platform at First Trade. And once again, to access it, you can do it from your home screen. Uh, there is an Options Wizard button here on your home screen. You can click on that to access it. Uh, if you go to your trading, your options tab, you will also see the options wizard uh, link here uh, in your options trading tab. And then uh, when you're under research and tools, uh, you will see our other credit spread cover call and short put report, which is basically what I just showed you on the platform, meaning you can basically get all that information here as well. So for example, this was that uh, United Healthcare uh, trade that we were looking at. Um, if we look at uh, TSM, this was the TSM credit spread opportunity that we were just looking at. And you can actually trade these directly from this report here as well. You can click on that trade button. We'll actually pre-fill all the, uh, the order ticket for you here as well. So there's many different tools that Options Play is integrated into the first trade uh, platform to help you find opportunities, screen for ideas, and make sure that you have the, the, the analysis um, that you need in order to make that trading decision. And once you have a decide, uh, once you have a trade that you're ready to make, click on the trade button and you can send that off for execution. So with that, like I said, that's what that covers what I wanted to share with you today here. What I want to do is I'm going to open this up for Q&A. Um, I will, uh, there is a Q&A window at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions regarding anything that I just showed you here today, please type your questions in the Q&A window and I will try to answer as many questions as I have time for today before I have to sign off. Um, okay, I have only sold cover calls and cash secured puts. If I sell credit spreads, do I need to have the resources to exercise the options? Great question. So um, when you're selling a credit spread, generally speaking, you're, you're selling credit spreads without the intentions of owning the stock or, 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 or being short the stock, depending on what is a bullish or bearish credit spread. Um, but just like when you're selling cover calls and cash secured puts, that's always a risk. Um, the best way to avoid that risk is to close out credit spreads about two to three weeks from expiration and either roll it or just simply close it. That's the best way, in my opinion, to avoid uh, early assignment risk. Uh, you know, early assignment is usually not uh, much of a risk if you're more than two weeks out from expiration. It usually tends to uh, be elevated when the option is in the money and you're approaching the last two weeks of expiration, that's when you have a higher chance of being uh, assigned early on your short strike. So your risk is not any higher with the credit spread than it is with a cover call and cash secured put. Um, but the best, uh, you know, from a best practices perspective, the best way to avoid that risk is to close out or roll the trades about two weeks from expiration, especially if it's in the money. Um, the platform does not look at fundamentals. It obviously has some basic fundamentals in terms of PE uh, built into the tool. So you have you know, a, a basic valuation screener, but we're not looking at the, the pure fundamentals of the trade. Uh, you do have uh, on the options play platform, you have your PE ratio up here. You have your dividend ratio. You also have, uh, you know, what it's paying in terms of earnings per share uh, on your tool. What is the difference between calls and puts and options trading? Uh, okay, very basic question. Call options are options that give the buyers the right to buy 100 shares of the stock, and put options are op are contracts that give the buyer the option to sell 100 shares of the stock. So effectively what they determine is the directional view of the stock, right? So you buy calls when you're bullish, you buy puts when you're bearish and vice versa. If you're selling, if you're selling a put, then you're neutral to bullish. And if you're selling a call, you're neutral to bearish. 
Um, you know, we have some some basic options education on that front. If let's say you, you're you're learning from the very beginning and you're trying to understand the differences between a call and put contract, uh, please look at some of our options education to help you understand that. I'm not sure I fully understand what you said about the width and the calculation you did there. Could you please give some quick and differential explanation on that? Sure. So when we talk about a credit spread or any vertical spread, we'll go back to that TSM example. Um, whenever we look at, uh, that was a bullish um, credit spread, right? Yeah, okay, let's look at TSM. So. In this particular example, we were selling a 138, 130 put spread. Um, so the diff the distance between these two strike prices, any vertical spread, the distance between the two strike prices, that's how much is at play. So meaning if, if the distance between 138 and 130 is $8, what you collect in this particular case, $3.43, what you collect, the rest of the of the eight dollars is going to be how much you're risking. So if you make, if you can potentially make three dollars and forty three cents on the eight dollars, that means you will be risking four dollars and fifty seven cents. So if you add three forty three to four fifty seven, that comes out to be eight dollars. So whenever you're selling a credit spread, you want to maximize how much you're collecting because by maximizing how much you're collecting, you're minimizing um, how much you're risking. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find credit spreads that have the highest premium versus width ratio, because that means that you are making the most and risking the least, right? The higher that ratio, the, the better the risk reward ratios in your favor. So let, let's look at SIG, for example. This has a premium to width ratio of 46%. That means we're very close to one-to-one. -one. Um, so as you can see, I can potentially, you know, the the, di the difference between these two numbers are is seven dollars, right? So, um, uh, ninety seven versus ninety is seven dollars, right? So, in this particular case, when I can potentially make three dollars and forty five cents in terms of a credit, the rest of it, three dollars and fifty five cents, is what I have at risk. That's a risk to reward ratio that's very close to one to one, right? So S SIG from a risk reward ratio is the most favorable risk, most favorable credit spread I can find versus let's say a, a Broadcom, right? It's a $1,300 stock. So uh, obviously not something that everyone will trade. And if you can see the difference between these two stocks, the 1310 and 1220, that's a $90 uh, uh width, right? So if you look at a $90 width here, I'm collecting 30, uh, effectively 30, uh, call it $36 out of the $90. Um, the rest of it is going to be my risk, $54. So for every $36 I can potentially make, I'm going to be risking $54. That risk to reward ratio is, uh, you know, just a little bit worse than one and a half to one. So that's what the ratio tells us is what is the risk reward ratio um, and how far is it skewed in my favor or against me? The higher the ratio, the better the risk reward, the lower that ratio, the worse the risk reward. So that's why we always sort it based on this criteria so that when you're looking for all opportunities, um, you have the, the opportunities to the best risk to reward ratio at the top of your screener. And as you scroll down, the further down you go, the worse the risk to reward is. There's still good, there's still decent risk to reward here at the bottom of the list. Um, the the mat, the absolute minimum that we'll go to is 33%. Anything lower than 33%, we will not display because the risk to reward ratio at that point is worse than two to one. So hopefully that helps understand your question. Does options play help with trading zero days to expiration options? Uh, it does, and we're actually looking at expanding kind of our uh, capabilities in terms of helping you automate screening for zero days to expiration strategies, but you absolutely can use this for trading zero days to expirations. Um, I'm just pulling up, uh, you know, for example, SPY. If let's say you wanted to trade uh, something that was zero days to expiration, you can do that. And you can actually compare different strategies side by side using zero days expiration strategies. Yeah. 
is the rollover automatic in the platform? Uh, roll, if you're talking about rolling a position, that's never automatic, right? You have to initiate a roll. No, no platform will automate, it, automate the roll for you. Um, so yeah, that, that's something you really have to do on your own. How does first trade handle a credit spread in which the short position is in the money and assigned the long position is still out of the money? Um, so if you have a short option that has been assigned early to you and you still have the long leg, technically your risk hasn't changed. Um, but if you keep holding that through expiration where the long leg expires worthless and you keep holding on to the security leg, now you are adding more exposure to your portfolio because you are no longer hedging that stock like with a long uh, call or put. Um, so it's not how does first trade handle it. I mean, first trade will handle it the same way any other brokerage firm handles it from a margin perspective, right? It's just a matter of whether or not you have enough capital to hold on to that uh, the stock leg, if you don't, you'll get liquidated. If you do, then you're going to be exposed to the gains and losses of that underlying security. Um, I recommend that if you ever get assigned early, that you go ahead and close out that stock leg immediately, close out the long leg as well, and remove all exposure you know, in the underlying security that you have. What is the options play score and what does it signify? The options play score is basically helping you understand these three metrics, max reward, max risk, and probability of profit, and how those three things are actually uh, providing kind of a true risk reward ratio. The reason we do this is because if you look at the risk reward ratio of this put option, it's not really useful, right? It's telling you that your max reward is 49,000, your max risk is $169. That sounds fantastic, right? But that requires the S&P 500 to go to zero at the end of today, right? So it's just, they're just kind of garbage, meaningless numbers if you think about it from that perspective, um, which is why we created the options play score. Uh, the options play score is based on what is realistic in terms of you know how far can the can can SPY go for today, right? So if you look at SPY expiring today, if you look at the expected range, it's four ninety six to five hundred three, right? So what we're basically saying is realistically, how far can SPY go within that realistic range? What is your true risk to reward ratio of that strategy, and then it calculates the options play score for you, uh, basically. A, a, a yellow score means that it's neutral. Your risk to reward is fairly on average and it's balanced. If you have something that's a green, that means you have very strong risk to reward ratio. Keep in mind that even though we're seeing all red, that's because we're comparing a June 21st strategy with the expected range for today. We got to uh, switch over to the June um, 21st expiration to get a better sense for the view of that specific strategy. So we're saying that if you look at the expected range for June 21st between 469 and 539, the risk reward ratio here looks quite strong. You can potentially uh, make $2,400 while risking 763. You have about a 40% chance of probability of profit. You know, that's a strong risk reward ratio. That's why you have a option split score of 163. Um, you know, you have other strategies like this where the max reward is unlimited. How do you calculate risk reward on something that has unlimited risk reward ratio? Well, the, re the reality is you can't. But as I said, there's an expected range that we, uh, you know, have a, a good sense for what the option is going to trade in based on implied volatilities. So we basically use that expected range to calculate what's your best case scenario in that range, what's your worst case scenario, and then calculate a much better risk reward ratio that's actually useful to you um, based on those numbers. That's what the options play score does. How does options trading differ to futures trading? Uh, I would say it's a completely different, that's like saying what's the difference between, uh, you know, futures trading is much closer to trading the underlying security, the stock, um, versus options trading as you're trading a derivative on that underlying security.
Um, there's a question about, you know, are we adding, are we going to be adding more volatility tools like curves, realized volatility versus implied volatility charts and strategies like calendar spreads. Um, so, you know, the IV rank is, is specifically meant to help you understand how is uh, IV compared to its history, uh, the realized volatility. So the IV rank is meant to, to provide that. Um, we don't plan on adding curves, but in terms of other strategies, uh, we do support calendar spreads already. So you can actually click on the strategy button um, if you want to look for calendars. So for example, let's say you want to look for a long put calendar or a long call calendar, you can do that um, already here uh, on the option play platform. It's already supported for you based on the strategy editor that is at the bottom of your screen. So you can click on modify of any of these strategies and you can add any of these strategies already. Does options play a value at strangles and flies? Absolutely. You can click on neutral, uh, short strangle. Uh, you can just set up a short strangle and you can easily just say, okay, I want to go wider on my short strangle. Uh, I want to move all the strikes down. Uh, you know, we made it super easy for you to construct strangles, straddles, you know, all types of strategies like butterflies. So for example, if you want to do a short iron butterfly and you want to make the wingspans wider, you just click on one click of a button. You want to move all the strikes up one or down one. You just click on the button and it'll just move the, uh, the butterflies for you. It's a lot easier than kind of using these drop down menus and going one by one changing, uh, you know, the strikes of, let's say you wanted to move everything one strike up. You used to have to go like this one by one and go, you know, 501, 522, one by one here. You can just click on one button. It'll move all the strikes higher. One button will move all the strikes lower. Uh, you click on one button, it makes it wider. You click on one button, it makes it narrower. Uh, we really built this to, to easily trade some of these strategies. Um, you know, question about are, is there going to be automation for different types of expiration dates? That is something that we are currently working on so that you can basically say, you know, show me strategies just for seven days out or just for zero days to expiration. Or, you know, I like to trade 90 day options. Uh, help me structure these strategies. So that's that's kind of our next evolution of options play. If I buy a call, do I need to be able to exercise it? No, you do not need to have the cash to exercise a call in order to buy it. You just need to have the cash to buy the call. That's it. Um, is there an OP tutorial? There are many OP tutorials. We've, uh, you know, there's a lot of options education sessions that we have recorded over the, you know, we do a session every Wednesday or every other Wednesday. Those are all recorded for you. So we have, uh, hours and hours and hours of tutorials of using options play for various strategies, for various um, scenarios. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of that information. So you can reach out to your first trade team uh, to help point you in the right direction for where those webinar recordings are. Um, with that, that looks like I've answered all of your questions at the moment. So with that, thank you so much, everyone, for your time this afternoon. I hope that this is helpful in giving you an understanding of kind of the new tools that are coming down the uh, that, that is available to you here at First Trade. Again, once again, to access that, you click on the Options Wizard button here at First Trade, and that will give you access to everything. With that, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great trading day, and I'll see you guys here next time.